Hi, everybody. I am Mike Bailey. I'm, I'm Raf. This is Raf. We are here to talk about web services we just don't need. Now, I had a talk that I wrote. Well, I sort of wrote it a while back. And I had slides, sort of. And they all self-destructed with the a bit major malfunction of encryption and hard drives. I don't have any slides or anything now. So we're, we're going to wing it. My opinion is that if the best way to be prepared for any event is to just be able to wing it anyway. So if we don't know this shit by now, we probably shouldn't be up here, right? I don't know shit. Okay, sorry. These are rock star mics. Okay. Does that mean we need groupies? <laughs> Dude, I have groupies. All right. <laughs> not you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he does not count. All right, so let's talk about some web services. Um, I break a lot of web applications. Um, I, I do re web application research, penetration testing for a living, and occasionally I stumble across things that just don't belong on the internet. Um, you guys know a few of those, right? Yeah. You, you've, you've probably got some ideas, and actually, I, we might have them shout some out, and then we'll discuss. Yeah, if you, if you feel like you have one that you'd like to hear discussed, <laughs> disgusted. Windows? <laughs> Windows isn't a web ser well. You're in the wrong track, dude. Yeah. <laughs> a A O L. A W stats is a big one. A W actually. stats is actually yeah. All right. Which, what was I going to start with? I have a friend. His name's Trey Ford. Is he here? He's dude, not here. Trey went to bed like an hour ago. All right. Um, Trey takes his barbecue pretty seriously. If you guys don't know what a barbecue is, it's a big box that makes smoke, and when you're when you're grilling your or not grilling when you're smoking your meat, you have to. There's gonna be too many meat jokes here. <laughs> it's 10 a.m. on Sunday. Why are you people here? <laughs> this was unexpected. All right. So when you're smoking your ribs, you have to be very careful about constant temperature monitoring your meat. Um. So what Trey has is he has a. What? Trey has a PC fan and two probes attached to his. <laughs> Does anybody have a bottle we can make Mike drink every time he uh, he he loses his train of thought? I'm not I'm not losing my train of thought. I'm just trying not to make any dirty jokes. Or... Dude, but you know yeah, what? The, is... the best dirty jokes are the implied ones. Yeah. Do, do you know where you are? <laughs> Anyways. So he's got a, um, the probes in the, in the PC fan attached to a computer, which is in a plastic bag because it rains sometimes in San Francisco. And that's all sitting outside next to his smoker. So this is all run through a web server that's sitting in that PC. And it tweets, too. So during the course of like a 14-hour smoking of a, um, a, 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 a piece of pork, um, during the course of that, it'll be tweeting the whole time, and he can monitor it. It makes graphs, nice little updates, things like that. Well, one day, he, or when he first got it, he was showing it off, and he actually upload, uploaded some of the graphs to TwitPic or some shit like that. And Speaking of web services we don't need. <laughs> we'll get there. And um, first of all, in, that, in those graphs, it has the IP address of the smoker. And I'm sitting there, and I mean, an internal IP address that may not be all that useful. But then, so, so, so as we're talking, at some point, when you guys hear something that uh, that sounds interesting to you, I want everybody to go. What could possibly go wrong at the same time? Yes. All right. So, anyways. All right, they're awake. Yeah. Why? Why are you guys here? <laughs> Don't you have better things to dude, do? Dude, they're still coming in. All right. <laughs> anyways, so. Now I have the IP address of his smoker. I have the, what the version of the software that's running, so I can go find a copy and download the source code. I actually had to, I actually had to find the guy that wrote the source code or the code because it's kind of obscure and ghetto, and I had to actually con him into giving me a copy of the source code by telling him that I wanted to help him do development on it. And so I start looking at it. It's fucking full of cross-site scripting holes, cross-site request forgery holes, things like that. Um, so what you're saying is you could help trace smoke. <laughs> Wow. So, Never mind. <laughs> anyways, the end result is that now every time Trey, I'd have a, I have a great slide with a screenshot, but now every time Trey goes to um, update his smoker, 
um, it pops up little messages at him and he gets a nice little reminder of me. It's fun. It's beautiful. Yes. Every time Trey goes to smoke his mate, there's Mike. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So that's I'm one of the, the comedy relief. That's one of the stupid ones, but that's not really all that serious or that dangerous or anything like that. <laughs> it, it is. It's a bad thing. No, but actually, think about how many of those there are on the internet. And if you used uh, if you used that really cool banner grabbing, uh, I think there's four on the internet. I told you this thing was ghetto. The fact that you know that worries <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody here have one? <laughs> Do you have a smoker on the internet? <laughs> There's other stupid tw services that use Twitter, though. Uh, who's heard of Tweet My PC? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Well, Mike. Tweet, tweet My PC is a way to remotely control your computer via Twitter. Now, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Twitter. It's like, it's like go to My PC or WebEx, only more secure. Yes. <laughs> Because nobody has ever hacked a Twitter account before. So the way it works is you basically send commands to your PC, it'll execute them and then send the response back. And there's specific commands you can do or you can say CMD and then say whatever shell command you want it to run. Now, th this was written by a guy, he was, he's a Microsoft MVP, most valued programmer. I don't actually know what that means because I'm not in the Microsoft culture. They have acronyms for everything. But um, th this guy knows how to code. I mean, I've, he's written built a project that's actually a fairly impressive code base, I mean, for what it is, and he never stopped to think what could possibly go wrong. That's awesome. So uh, one of, some of the other commands that this thing um, can run are things like take screenshots and post them up to TwitPic. Now if you're... No, hold on, hold on. I, I, I want to reflect on that for a second as we, as we watch the fire crackle. You know, it, it's, it's a really good idea take screenshots randomly of your PC. When you don't know what's on the screen, obviously, because you're taking the damn screenshot. Right. <laughs> yes, because, you know, it, it's, a, it's a really good idea because um, there's no possible way anybody could view those in order and see what you have, read your email. Yeah. So I, I have a directory on my web server now that it, I actually have a bot that pulls down those pictures every time they get posted. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, funny story. So um, we were... Um, we were, we were talking a while, it was, must have been last year, I think, Mike. Yeah. We've been slacking on this project horribly, haven't we? We're bad so, at everything. Yesterday, apparently, and, and if, who was here for the fail panel yesterday? Yeah, so you know the uh, really cool uh, thing they did with the data mining the pictures? Yeah, we did it a long time before that. We were just too damn lazy to do anything with it. Um, One day we'll get around to taking it to the next level and like OCRing all the screenshots. It'll be badass. So what the, the, the back story is. <clears throat> I apologize for my loss of voice, but it's really hard to yell over uh, 1,400 people. Um, we, were, uh, we were sort of chatting on, uh, back and forth about uh, some, some things we saw, and I just sort of saw somebody post a, uh, sort of post a, uh, a screenshot, and uh, I'm like, hey, that's a random uh, alphanumeric uh, six-character six length, six length uh, identifier. I bet we could write a really quick loop that could grab all of them. So uh, apparently the, uh, the math I didn't do in my head is how many combinations there were times about 120K each. We pulled down all of TwitPic. I, yeah, we, I pretty much <laughs> have all of, yeah. <laughs> so there's a, uh, there's a one and a quarter terabyte someplace. Um, so by the way, ext3 does not like that big of a directory in one place. <laughs> I think I've accidentally found the limitations of which. So every time you try to view that, you know, open that directory, just sort of, Looks at you and goes, no. I'm sorry, but no. So there are, there are some interesting things. And as I was looking through there and deleting all the porn, because nobody wants that, uh, and sending it to Mike, um, <laughs> I, I, I did notice that, um, that there were some very interesting things. Like uh, there was a guy that was getting help from his tech support team with a spreadsheet he was working on for next quarter's forecast. I, I just want you guys to think about that for a second, because... Um, that's this quarter. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got the screenshot. It's beautiful. It's still up on TwitPic. So, did you know that you can't? Actually, this is not true anymore. You can now, as of a few months ago. Until a few months ago, you weren't able to actually delete pictures from TwitPic. You could remove them from your stream, but they'd still be there if somebody knew the code, the path. And when this TweetMate PC thing posted those pictures, it would have the path on there. 
So even after people deleted them, I could go back and find them later on. I found all kinds of interesting things. There was one I found was somebody just set up a um, just set up a remote desktop server, and they had their username, password, IP address, all the connection information, sitting there waiting for clients to connect. It was great. I, I didn't actually connect. I should have. So um, I don't have anybody here that was at ThoughtCon. Yes, one Rocky person? guys. Do you guys oh, uh, do you guys remember what we talked? What I what I did? <laughs> All right. So, thank you. Well, I say I had three. That's awesome. So uh, I have a particular uh, love for Flash. If you guys don't know, it's not Flash so much because you know I'm, I'm not I have really a special hate hatred for Flash. We, we know, Mike. It's okay. It's okay. Step number three, man. <laughs> um, and it's not that I hate Flash particularly. It's I just dislike the people that write Flash because they're not really IT people. They really have no desire to code anything. They just like to drag and drop. So, um, yeah, it's okay. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's kind of cool. <laughs> um, no, so uh, I, I, yeah, I, I do a fair amount of these uh, these uh, web assessments in my uh, in my uh, everyday job uh, in the boring part of life. Um, I get out there and you know you try to convince people that uh, that doing things. It, that are that that were bad in 1997 with JavaScript um, is now bad with Flash because they just can't seem to grasp that concept. So, um, case in point, so we're going to talk about ser you know, services we, we don't need. Um, so this is a uh, this is a place that I was at. I was having a conversation with the C level group, uh, you know, C level executive, and um, he was telling us about all the awesome uh, Web 2.0 stuff. By the way, if we say Web 2.0, you can throw shit at us. It's all right. Um, all the All the web 1.9999999 um, stuff, <laughs> stuff that uh, that was that they had, and how all the great development they were doing, and how they were migrating to new media, and um, and that they were migrating their, you know, they're migrating all their platforms to more usable, more uh, more open, um, more flashy environments, and and he couldn't stop bragging about this new ERP app they were writing. Does anybody see where this is going yet? Yeah, so go ahead, say it nice and loud. That's right. So, uh, yeah, so he's talking about this ERP app, and I'm just sort of staring at him. And I mean, like, just staring, like he just grew horns in a tail, staring. <laughs> yeah, um, and he just he stops midstream, and he's like, I'm, did, Am I saying something wrong? I said, you, you wrote an ERP front end in Flash. He said, Oh, yeah, that's really cool. He goes, you got to see this, and so he <laughs> then he decided to take it upon himself to demo it, which was awesome. Um, by the way, you guys, does, does anybody here use a uh, flash encryption tool? <laughs> More on that later, um, <laughs> or maybe we should just segue into that real quick. So, sidebar. Um, it's, Oh no! Google it. It's viewed as an entire market. If anybody wants to, you can look it up right now. The thing, there really isn't any such thing as a flash encryption tool, right. but there's a market for it. So, so there, people will sell you one. There's about there there. Oh, the hell, fail. Okay. So there's about uh, there's several hundred tools out there, uh, several hundred companies that will sell you a, a, a tool anywhere from ninety nine dollars to the enterprise pro version for one thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars uh, to encrypt your flash apps. Right? Well, good. That was weak. Weak sauce. That's all right. You can try again. We'll let it slide this time. Okay. Beautiful. Now, that's, see, that was loud. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so these flash, uh, so what's the, f you know, after all, uh, Flash is a, uh, is a, uh, a language that uh, requires a, uh, an inter you know, something to run it, right? It requires a, a, a sort of an interpreter to run it on the local machine. Um, so if you're going to encrypt a flash file, step one of running it is what? And thank you for your $1,999. <laughs> anyway, so this guy's telling me about all this, this beautiful flash app and how they've encrypted it. And so I gave him this story about why that was just complete, you know, smoker. Um, and uh, that's going to be a joke, dude. Just say mm. smoker randomly. Yeah. Uh, and so it already is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. 
So he's talking about it and he's showing it to me and I'm like, can I, can I show you something real quick? He's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, what do you, what do you, I'm like, well, here, there's this free tool and there's, there's hundreds of them, right? There's lots of free tools out there that you can uh, decrypt flash with. I, I know a couple good ones. If, if you know one, shot one out. Um, so there's a, uh, there's this app and I, you know, load the, load the flash app in there and I, um, um, click the decrypt button. Uh, no, um, I, 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 no, I'm just kidding. Um, that'd be cool though, wouldn't it? So I, I, oh, somebody's phone's ringing. Hold on. Dude, there's Ann's teleporting in your pants. Leave it there. Just let's not talk about that. I'm not even going to go that way. Uh, so anyway, well, let's not talk about Flash. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Flash. Yes, so, uh, 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 decompiled this app. And um, I just I'm just scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. I go, do you, do you see this? He goes, Yeah. I'm like, you know what this is, right? He goes, Well, he goes, well, I'm not an engineer, but it's like a database connection string. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Thank you. This is fun. I got him trained now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you guys are like Pavlov's dogs. This is beautiful. Can we make uh, him do tricks now? <laughs> No, that might be pushing it. So um, I immediately explained to him um, why that was a bad idea by um, opening uh, uh, SQL Server Manager on my laptop, connecting to his server using those credentials, and just listing all his tables. And he said, well, that's no fair. You have source code. <laughs> did, did anybody here not know you can decompile Flash objects? OK. OK, cool, thanks. Apparently there's a lot of people that don't know that. Um, let me, well, hold on, I'm gonna finish my story. I was gonna tell a story. I want to finish mine. Okay, go. Fight. My story's better. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so mine's almost done. So they're <laughs> and they're listening. So uh, as I was explaining to him why this is a bad idea and the whole idea why how I could have source code possibly without actually talking to anybody and just getting the object, he says he looks at he looks me dead in the eye and he says, "So we should probably pull this off the internet." <laughs> yeah. The floor is yours, man. <clears throat> Beat that. I was actually going to tell this one later, but we're talking about Flash stuff and how nobody knew you can decompile them. Um, has anybody heard of Schlage Link? You know, the lock people? Yeah, the company that makes those locks that go on doors that hold doors shut. Um, they, they, decided, coming, sir. they decided to create a web enabled home, uh, what is it, home automation system. Call it Schlage Link. Oh, that was weak. That we'll get you. We'll give you one more chance to do that one. What could possibly go wrong? Let's see. All right. They were better for me. Yeah. Well. You didn't. You didn't do the visual cues good enough. I, I'm not even trying. Let's see. This is how good I am without trying. So, anyways. You, you're a ninja. I, I, I was out at CES a few months ago. Well, here at CES a few months ago, and I was bored because CES actually isn't that exciting if you're not into the hardware and the latest and greatest stuff. And I actually hate technology, so. I, I, I was at CES and I was You're wandering in the around. Wrong field. What? You're in the wrong. No, field. I'm not. I break technology. That's how I just express my anger. <laughs> and there is a lot to express. Yes, I'm an angry person. Um, so I, I was bored and I was wandering around and I see the booth for the Schlage Link thing. I'm looking at their. They have the little kiosk set up and they have 18 salespeople that mob that mob you the second you. Flash zone. Okay. Throw, throw candy or something next time. All right. So, uh, <laughs> dude, they're returning fire. <laughs> yes. We're going to hide behind the table and build a fort. <laughs> Raph, get up from the table. They don't, they don't, I'm still up here. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, I start playing with this Schlage Link system on their kiosk while the salesperson is talking to me. I'm sitting here viewing source and looking at the looking for cross site scripting, cross site request forgery holes. That was fun. But then a little bit later, I got um, more interested because I wanted to follow up on that, and I went and I bought the lock for my door. I didn't actually ever install it. I should because my door still doesn't have a lock on it. But um, I, I don't trust that lock. I, I'd rather have none. Um, so I, I set up this lock and I start playing with it and I'm looking through the web application that they have set up for the back end. 
And I notice that there's a flash object that loads up, but it doesn't actually make any. I, I'm watching all my traffic with uh, Firebug. If anybody thinks that Firebug is awesome, they're right. Um, I'm watching all the HTTP requests it's making, but it's, I noticed this flash object. It looks like it should be making requests, but is it called? I can't even remember what it's called, but it had some <laughs> name like that was like network object or some something like that. And I start looking at it, but it's not actually making the HTTP request. So I decompile the thing and look at it. And it's connecting to an arbitrary port on their system. It's not arbitrary. Huh? It's not arbitrary. Oh. No, it's, good. it's connecting to a port on their system. And it, it, <laughs> it sends over a few lines of data and then it keeps getting data back. And what it, it turns out what this is doing is whenever you like unlock or lock your door, it sends the system sends a message to your base station, which is on your local network, which then uploads that message to the server. That server in turn broadcasts the message back to you and the, or through this flash object to the web application. But there's no actual authentication on this thing. So with one line of Perl, I was able to actually watch every single lock being unlocked in their entire system. All day long. Hold on. What could possibly go wrong? And I would do a live demo, but I, I, I like the fireplace too much. Also, yes. I might get in trouble because I, I don't know if it's legal. It's probably a, at least a violation of term of service. <laughs> huh? <laughs> What's your What's point? point? I like him. <laughs> Well done. Mike, Mike's easily influenced. I am. <laughs> do, 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 do. No. Okay. <coughs> It'll take a minute to connect. It might take a minute. It's it's making a whole bunch of requests saying I want to listen to all of these dis different user IDs. There it goes. There we go. Yeah. Every time this is actually only watching lights right now, not locks. But every time somebody turns their lights on, off, or dims them, it's letting me know. <laughs> it, it, it's sort of like watching the Matrix. That's pretty cool. All right. <laughs> this is my visualizer. You know, it'd be cool if they had like geotag that. You could put it in like uh, overlay it with Google Earth. Oh man! And and then we could cross reference like people's tweets. <laughs> with Foursquare. With Foursquare. I actually can't. This is only monitoring, so I actually can't turn lights on and off through this system. Um, I may still be able to do it through the web application, but I returned it to the store because it wasn't up to par. Um, <laughs> To who? Ghost Hunters. Is that a TV show? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no, I just. Can, can you imagine I just said it didn't there, fit my needs. Can you fill out? Can you imagine filling out there that return form? Sir, so why are you turning this lock? The web app sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or the other reason, it's horribly insecure. Yes. <laughs> a web app. So, you know, I, I can't think of a more epic way to fail than that. I, they put that. No, we're done. We done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, right. No, we got to talk for another 45 minutes. Wow, seriously? Were that? Were that? Uh, so, so, <clears throat> um, I've got. Uh, so I'm going to do like the. Uh, I've got a couple of stories I'll, I'll share with you guys. If you guys uh, read my blog back in April, then then you'll recognize some of these. But um, what is your blog? Are we telling them? Or are you being anonymous right now? I have to be anonymous for a oh. minute. Well, okay, for professional reasons. You can just Google White Rabbit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Follow the White Rabbit. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Okay. Um, so there's a there. You guys watch. Uh, you guys watch. Anybody watch any late night TV? You ever seen the the pitch men do their thing? But wait, there's more. No. Okay. All right. Well, Billy Mays is dead. If you're still watching Billy Mays, <laughs> turn on. That's true. He, they're still running his ads. Yeah. Well, he's still getting paid. Um, so. Uh, Really, really interesting, um, really interesting failure of a, of a web app. You can put the fire back on, dude. dude this is my fire now. We're, watch we're watching the Matrix fire. Yes. Um, so, 
<clears throat> Somebody's calling me. Hold on, Mike's gonna take talk, a call no, real keep quick. Keep talking. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Schley calling. What's up, man? He's taking a live hey, call. Let me this put you on great. speakerphone. Let me put you on speakerphone. <laughs> this is Biho. Hey, man, um, you're talking to like an entire group of people or an audience of people. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How's it going? Good. What, 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 what do you have to say to them? Um, how's, how's the talk? What? <laughs> We should probably hang All up. All right, on. I'm gonna hang up now, dude. <laughs> so, <clears throat> story. This is uh, this. I like to I like to call this one. Uh, but wait, there's more. Um, so, at, at the appropriate places, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and you guys are gonna say, <laughs> right? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong is just kind of implied on this one. So. Um, Again, uh, I do a lot of these types of things for, for uh, more private organizations. Um, usually the audience is a little uh, less receptive than you guys are. Um, the, the usual look is like this. Tell me if you recognize this from your developers. <laughs> and that means I totally buy what you're selling, right? Have a, uh, have a, uh, did a uh, <clears throat> eval of, um, of uh, so, uh, they were trying to help somebody, a, a group build a, uh, Build a more uh, more robust. I guess more robust is the wrong way to say it because that would imply there was something there to begin with. But um, we're trying to help them build a, a, a sapling of a, a security program for their web apps. Uh, this just so happens that it's a very very large company that unfortunately all of you touch somehow during your day. Um, I no no no. Those, those stories are for later. Um, <laughs> That's creepy. Uh, so um, looked at a um, looked at, uh, at at their uh, company's homepage. You know the the uh, company name dot com page, and I, I don't know about you guys, but the first thing I'm always drawn to is oh look login box. Um, and so I I, I asked uh, the guy that I was working with as we were doing this mini assessment that we were supposed to do a report out on. Um, you know where this, what this does, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's just our you know web web login for it's a strong authentication web login, and it's single sign on for the rest of there." Which, which for those of you that don't know, if you and somebody says single sign on, it means their cookie is like usable across their entire domain, all of it. Or go silent. Oh, right, exactly. Thank you. So. Um, I had, to, I had to wait on that one. I don't know what's going on here. So uh, he's explained to me how you know uh, only this part of the system is just to sort of log in and and check the status of your uh, your claim um, and and look at uh, look at any kind of bill you might have and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, so that's not regulated at all. All right. So uh, the funny thing is. Um, that assessment lasted, I think, 38 seconds um, because, <clears throat> you know, okay, so there's just, there's just some things that shouldn't work in 2010. Putting the single tick or one equals one in your login box is one of them. <laughs> right, exactly. So this is actually the beginning of the story. <laughs> so... Uh, we, we quit there and he asked, uh, he needed, this guy needed help. He was a security, ma a security manager and y you all know how much people listen to security managers and the corporations, right? So he needed some firepower, he needed some ammo, somebody that's, that's kind of done this before and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll kind of come out and help you and see if we can draw up some support. And he's like, what, it would really be helpful if we could do a live demo for them. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't feel comfortable doing that on your live. So he's like, come on, I'll get, I'll get executive sign off, we'll do a live demo. I'm like, all right, dude, we'll do a live demo. So I threw, about, threw on uh, you know, my, best, uh, my best shades and went up there and uh, we're talking. And, uh, and I'm explaining to them how this is. Uh, and by the way, so the room is set up sort of like this. There's a, there's a bunch of developers. There's, a there's like the, the C-level uh, C folks, a cluster of four sitting in the left-hand side. Uh, and there's a bunch of DBAs across the back. You know, they kind of, it's like high school, it's like not even high school, it's like grade school. It's like a grade school dance, you know, where everybody's sort of in their own space. Girls looking at boys across the dance floor. Um, it's kind of like what this was. So they're sitting there and they're listening, and, and so I um, 
And I told them how easy it would be to pop this database. And they're like, well, can we see it? And I said, sure. So I work for a company that does a little bit of web app stuff. And um, I, I have this, I have a tool that's sort of named after what it does. It's called a SQL injector, right? It's not rocket science. Uh, and so, you know, you basically copy paste the URL, you click the button that says go, and it starts going. And while it's going, I'm talking to them about the bad things that can happen from SQL injection and such, and, and I'm getting this. Apparently, I'm wasting their time. So um, immediately, about the, about a minute into uh, into this, you know, there's a uh, little box that pops up and it shows the machine's name, the SQL uh, version number, and the IP address. Right. So the uh, the the guy, uh, the security guy, now has kind of got a this sm small smile creeping across his face, and DBAs in the back are like, "Huh, that's probably not good." <laughs> But uh, you know they're not panicked yet, um, and so I, I'm trying to explain that hacking. This really isn't hacking. It's just sort of stumbling through accidental fail. So I uh, I get there. I look over at the C folks. Can I get your permission to see this button over here? It says get rows. Can I can I do that just to, for posterity? He goes yeah. Go ahead. Click. Within about 30 seconds, we had about 20 percent of the database on my laptop. The row names and stuff. That we got the column names. And it only gets better from there. So at that point, I decided I was going to really kind of uh, show them, you know, beyond what a tool can do. Because now I'm extracting data, so I can own the, own your data, which is cool. And now they're slightly panicking. Security guy smiles just a little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and so I uh, I open a, a I'm writing out a command line. It's got the the command string. Stop me if you've heard this. Net user add administrator. Okay. So. Um, there's a guy in the back that at that point just goes, whoa, stop. <laughs> and the entire Live room. Demo over. <laughs> and the entire room at that point does one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and not being able to help myself, I said, what's up? <laughs> He's like, well, I think it's, I, that's, that's good enough. He's like, I, yeah, I, I really don't think we should go any further. Why? <laughs> right. So um, what could possibly go wrong? And so he looks at me and he says, well, here's the deal. Um, I, I really, I don't know if we can talk about, I can't really know if we can talk about it because you guys are technically a vendor and we should. And the, C the CISO looks at him and says, well, we're here to learn, Mark. Why don't you just go ahead and tell us? At this point, I think he may have crapped himself. <laughs> <laughs> Because here's where it gets really good. So normally, when I when I you know when I look at a database and I've got full access to your uh, to your machine, I can you know pop all the data. That's pretty good, right? I'm I'm pretty happy. I'm a happy guy. It's you know life's pretty easy. So the fact that it gets better from there <laughs> is like sprinkles on ice cream. It's just delicious. So uh, <clears throat> by the way, Mike, did you notice the room filled up? Yeah. I mean, these people are just waking up, or maybe they're just looking for somewhere to sleep. <laughs> you guys rock. Anyway, so back to this. Yes. They came for the fireside chat. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll hurry us along. So um, he says, uh, he goes, don't, don't hit enter. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I mean, I, you can just delete. It's just a local account. You can create, delete it later. And he goes, he goes well, look. Um, <laughs> We went through this round of server consolidation. There was a lot of extra hardware glut, and this box was overbuilt. So we had to uh, we had to consolidate this instance of SQL Server. I'm like, really? And uh, he says, well, the architects decided that because there was similar classifications of data, that the ERP system should live on it. Right. The fact that this gets better just is like is a testament to how really bad things get. So the security guy is now smiling just a little more. And I'm actually like really interested. Because <laughs> this is a level of fail I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Well, 
I'm like, yeah, I know. So you can you can do things across the different uh, SQL instances and stuff. And I, you know, that's not that's that's pretty bad. I'm like, well, I'm like, yeah, but you know, you're, at least you're still limited. He goes, ah, uh, well. The fire is over. Should we try a campfire? There is more. Relaxing so as he says, um, nice, nice. <laughs> the relaxing fishies. So. And now he's explained to me that uh, because the ERP front end app was written in, you guys ready for this? DCOM. Um, and it didn't work across the firewall, that server is where? On the inside. That's right. And so the security guy now has a smile that goes from about this year to this year. <laughs> and if he goes like this, his head might flip over. <laughs> so, uh, I'm like, wow, that is, uh, I'm like, that's, that's pretty special. Um, you should, like, yeah, that, that really is a bad idea. Um, like, so, so if I, you know, I'd be making myself a username on your internal network. And he goes, uh, actually. And at this point, you're asking yourself, how? <laughs> Do we kill kittens? <laughs> well, Folks, because this, uh, this, these guys had decided to do this so well, um, corporate policy, corporate security policy dictated that all internal machines, all internal Windows machines had to be on the domain. And because of server consolidation, <laughs> you know the rest of that. So if I would have hit enter, I would have been what? God. Administrator on the domain. You would have been God. So, I have <laughs> what? I, is there more? Yeah, no, there isn't any right. more. But, I, but at, at that point, the, uh, my security contact is looking at me and, I, and I'm, he might have actually wet himself. Because um, <laughs> this is a completely unanticipated failure. Uh, and so he goes, um, he goes, so what do you recommend first? <laughs> I, I, my, uh, the, the, the sales guy that was with us just looked at me and I, that, and I as serious as I could say it, in. as seriously as I could say it, I looked at him dead in the eyes and said, turn it off. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I've, that's probably my best one. I've, uh, I've, I've run into that twice now where, um, you know, I mean, look, let's be realistic, right? Uh, cor corporations have uh, server, you know, everybody's server consolidating, virtualizing, pushing to the cloud. Sorry, that was for Hoff. He's probably not here. Yeah, he's gone. He flew out this morning. Oh, flew out this morning on a Cisco plane. Um, <laughs> he's now, right, he's so now Let's virtual. talk more about web servers. Yeah, go back let's to your web servers. You guys ready for more? All right, Mikey, take it over, buddy. Money is cool. Um, people manage their money through web applications, and that's convenient, but it's not necessarily such a good idea. Um, you know, the online banking, things like that, they get hacked over. Well, actually, you don't really hear about it that often, but they do get hacked all over the place. Or at least all the ones I've looked at have vulnerabilities. My mortgage company, actually, um, I've been fighting with them for, well, actually, I've moved away now, so hopefully I'll be done with them soon. But... Um, I've been fighting with them for. Did you sell your house? Um, as soon as I do sell it, I'm gonna tell them. Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, anyways, their web application for managing my mortgage and my online banking and all that stuff. Uh, session ID is a timestamp. There's cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery holes all over the place. I, I actually sent all these vulnerabilities to them. I sent. I mean, okay, let's keep going. Actually. My um, statements are actually PDFs that are just sitting there in the server. Sequentially numbered probably. Sequentially numbered yeah. by your loan ID number. <clears throat> That's good. And w yeah, actually during tax season my social security number is in there too. Great. In a um, publicly accessible folder? Yes. I'm it, not even telling you guys where yeah, I live. He, yeah, he's not going to tell you what bank he uses because you guys probably have this problem too. All right. So I reported a whole bunch of issues to these guys. The response comes back. All right, the timestamp issue, it's not, a, it's not a problem because we have a secret formula we use to generate that, time, or that session ID. I'm like, no, it's a timestamp. I did it. I stole my own session three times. <laughs> Trust me. I'm an expert. Yeah, I know about these things. 
And they insisted that the cross-site scripting holes don't matter because they have countermeasures on the back end. I'm like, no, I stole my session three times. <laughs> um, the PDFs, they actually did apologize for that and remove those, or just the PDFs with my social security number in them from the server. But the links are all, actually, I, I actually just got that wrong. They removed the links from the server. The, the PDFs were still up there until I complained the second time. Um, Put the fish back. We got different aquariums now. <laughs> Piano, rain music, nature scenes, all right. Is this, okay. Whoa, no. <laughs> I do not need Anything that says name shit. that fish, you just don't know what's coming up on screen, so. <laughs> Nobody wants like a Lindsay Lohan shot or anything. Da David Soxby's Reef Aquarium. I like yeah, that. I went there, okay. All right, so th that's, the, that's the online banking apps. Th these are the online banking apps, they're pretty bad. They're not the worst out there. Who's heard of My Money? It's actually not very big, and there's a good reason for it. Um, online banking through Facebook. It's a Facebook app. Dude, this is a terrible aquarium. That is quite bossy. Or, or it's like Quentin Tarantino style. <laughs> fish are all packed. I'm, I'm reservoir fish. <laughs> reservoir fish. <laughs> reservoir fish. Beautiful. I like it. Go back to the fireplace. Yeah, we're going back to the fireplace. Okay, fire. I'm stoking up the fire now. All right. So, my money, Facebook app for what? Hands up on the table. You don't want to be still get up the fire. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, it, it has vulnerabilities like the fact that you can put a different Facebook user's user ID in and get a different profile to come up. Um, you have to guess which users are actually using this my money app, but it's not hard because there's a list of the fans. Um, <laughs> And the advertisement page for this, uh, from this company um, that created it, it says something to the effect of you can harness the power of social networking to, for your, um, to advertise your bank or some shit like that. Yeah. Get robbed on the net. Free. <laughs> yes. Sponsored by the RBN. Yeah. <laughs> so my money's bad, but that's, at least they're trying to make things private. Well, sort of, ish. Blippy. Everybody's used Blippy. I use Blippy. I want everybody to know what I'm buying. <laughs> All right, Blippy is awesome. Let's just skip that one. Actually, we don't have time for it. That'll go bring me off into an angry rant. Ah, uh, what else do I have? Wait, what has this been so far? Uh, this is my lazy, my depressed, hungover rant. I have many flavors of rants. All right. Um, where should I go next? Source code. What? So while you, while while his uh, while the hamster is getting back on the wheel, um, <laughs> one of the, uh, the so uh, we work with you know we were we want to talk about web services for just a second and um, <laughs> just if, a second we'll talk about web for just a second because um, I think that was the title of the talk at some point. Um, if anybody's a can of Dr Pepper, I've always wanted to say trust me I'm a doctor and hold that up so I'd appreciate that. Um, if anybody has some beer, I want beer. Dude, it's what? It's way All too right. early. Okay, go. It's way too late Talk. to be drinking. Um, so uh, lately, uh, uh, there, there's a talk I'm working on called "No Rest for the Wicked," and uh, it rest stands for representational state transfer. As if you guys know, rest restful web services. Now, does anybody know the main problem that I could possibly have with rest as a security person? <laughs> wow, it's insecure. <laughs> the answer up front was it's insecure. Good answer. <laughs> No, because uh, so uh, rest calls are entirely unstructured. So it, I'd like to. Uh, I'm, I'm a testing kind of guy. I like to poke and prod at things. So uh, if I'm if you're writing something, I need to be able to write a script or create a, something that will test it. Uh, the problem with rest is every developer gets to choose how they implement it. Right. For those of you that are, I don't know why people are still coming in. For those of you that are Is there new, a good talk next? Should we stay afterwards? <laughs> yeah, there must be a really good talk <laughs> after us. So for those of you new to the room, we're playing a game called What Could Possibly Go Wrong. Um, when I do this, everybody should say, What could possibly go wrong? Right, cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, so testing these things is evil, and I think the only people that actually write web, RESTful web services are the ones that either don't know how to code or are too lazy to follow rules. Um, 
there's this whole thing about how uh, you know APIs are, are if you really need a lightweight API, go with REST. I, I prefer to say that if you don't ever want to document what you're doing, go REST. Go REST. Get it? No? Wow. Okay. It wasn't that funny. It wasn't that funny. So working on a, uh, I don't know if I can tell you who it is. So working on a, uh, a particular uh, uh, implementation of REST, there was a, a service, a set of services on a particular domain that interested me that was passing data back and forth and it was just uh, you know a, a, serial, a serial string of, uh, of numbers and anytime I see numbers passing back and forth on a social media site that I use a lot uh, I'm always interested <clears throat> and um, I think Mike you might have mentioned this at some point not during talk but you've mentioned this before and uh, I, I was very interested in watching uh, things kind of go by and I like to tinker and manipulate so uh, at one point, I just started randomly putting things into the string that was being passed around. Uh, interestingly enough, um, if you substitute, uh, take the number one out and put in a string of script and just let it go, um, it gets passed around to 21 different servers eventually because how do I know this? Because they all posted back their IP address. Um, some of them the same IP address, which even worries me more. But <clears throat> so the moral of the story is, um, had a conversation with uh, uh, one of the folks that writes this, and he says, "Well, developers get to write." Are you flicking us off? What is that? Hold on. Oh, sorry. He's telling us to hurry up. He's telling us to hurry up. Cool. Thanks. We can fire off into a wrap, wrap up rant soon. Wrap up rant. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> and uh, he says, "Well, the developers uh, developers wrote an open API that allowed." outside folks to sort of, you guys know where, where we're going with this, to allow outside folks to start writing their own code and to create new interfaces and, and new plugins and, and new gadgets and crap like that. And the, 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 brilliant, the flash of brilliance there is that, well, we want to leave it as unstructured as possible to not restrict creativity. Yeah, you guys got it now. Um, well, what could possibly go wrong is you could cross-site script like a crap ton of this domain completely by accident, um, unfortunately from your corporate IP address. Uh, uh, but, but so, and, and the biggest challenge you have with, with something like that is, uh, again, testing it, right? So figuring out what it does as a security guys, you know, you guys go back to work at some point, well, some of you work. Uh, the rest of you just make my life hell. Uh, so if you go back to work on uh, Tuesday or Friday, what, what is today? I don't know. Whatever today is, Sunday. whatever day you go back to work, uh, you, you'll look around your, your company for REST web services and then ask yourself, how the hell are you going to test that? Because um, they're not going to document it for you. There's no pretty Java, or Java there's no pretty XML structure. Uh, there's no SOAP envelope. It's just crap streaming back and forth. Um, so I thought I'd just throw that out there as a closing thought for me that, uh, good luck. So there's a lot of things that are being pushed into the web. There's a lot of web services out there that some are, some of them are useful, some of them aren't useful, some of them are good ideas, some of them are bad ideas. One thing that everybody here, I, we, we really haven't even gone over it that much, but it, I want everybody here to understand there's absolutely no security built into the web. And Wait, what? I, is this a shocking revelation to anybody? Because it's, it really, people, we've been trying to hack on terrible, terrible fixes for um, web application problems for 15 years now. More than that, actually. But the, yeah. browsers are incredibly insecure. They have no boundaries. Web applications have no inherent boundaries built into them. We're trying like to hack it up. Cousin. See, I'm, I'm actually just about to get momentum here with my rant. Go for it. No, I, he stopped it. He killed it. Get your Browsers momentum. suck. What? Get your momentum. Come on, get, get your my mojo. momentum. All right. So, we're. <laughs> yeah. I've hacked his brain. You've hacked my brain. <laughs> I win. Anyways, um, web applications are very insecure. Um, 
cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, th these stupid little attacks that are getting people owned right and left all the time, they're not, they're not complicated, they're not new, but they're incredibly useful because they work everywhere. XSS is like the universal API. It makes it so that you can integrate your web application with anybody else's. It's great. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, whenever people want to move things onto the web, whether it's the admin panel for your network appliance or is there a reason that your firewall really needs a web, web interface on it? Are you, I mean, if you really can't work the CLI, you shouldn't be managing a firewall. You realize it just disqualified about 50% of the whole firewall build builders know, out there, right? But speaking of, I've, earlier this year I found a uh, XSS in the Palo Alto firewall within five minutes. It was the first place I looked. I think that people just aren't looking at them because they're expensive and people who have spare time aren't actually looking at them. It's crazy. Anyways. They're secure. Yeah, they are. We don't need most of the web services we have and most of them are really dangerous. Okay, I'll, I'll finish up with one story. Go for it. So I've uh, I've, I've got. Time, do we? Ha how much time do we have? We're, we're done. Out, we're out. Oh. Hey, okay, cool. Hey, thanks. Yes. <laughs>